Welcome to Bay Area Maker Fair 2018. This is such a great show. This is so large and people are bringing all their projects and all the stuff they're doing over the years. So yeah, why don't we go and check some of those out. Let's go. Thank you to Adam3D for sponsoring this year's trip to Make a Fair Bay Area. All right, we're here with Eric and his uh, 3D printed engine project. Like every, every time I interview someone here, it's, it's just getting better and better. This is so good. Uh, so you've, you're making 3D printed engines. Is it, is it to visualize, is it to, to it, learn about them? To visualize, to learn about it, for somebody to build a model and have an engine they like or learn about the inner workings of the engine and transmission and just see how everything goes together or or have a hobby. And these are all, I mean, you couldn't run gas through them and no, fire them, yeah. but they are accurate. I mean, they're the, accurate and everything moves as it should in a real engine. Uh, everything's designed off the real thing, so it, it uh, functions, all the moving parts interact with each other just like the real thing. What's your favorite ones out of the ones you've made so the far? My favorite is the, the flathead, um, the V8 flathead, because it's, it's the most detailed. How long does it take to, to model up one of these, and, and what do you start with? Uh, I start with the basic block, and but I haven't really kept track of how long it takes to model. Uh, it's a lot, you know, and I don't think I want to start keeping track of it. You've got electronics attached to them, you have motors in here, you have, is that an RPM sensor? Yeah, just a little RPM to show you the speed of the output and how it changes when you uh, shift the gears. Then there's little LEDs as spark plugs that go off right when it uh, they should in the real engine. Yeah. And show you how the top dead center and everything works in it. And you're doing, you're doing suspension too? Yeah, they do flex a little bit. Um, they're glued together to make everything more solid for the, right. for the show. Have you ever counted how many individual parts go into one engine? Uh, there's parts lists online. I don't, I don't know exactly how many on each one. There's a, there's a good amount in some of them. The more complex transmissions have quite a few more parts. As you mentioned, uh, parts lists online. People can find actually these engines yeah, online? The, most of the models are online. They're open source. Uh, they come with instructions, uh, parts lists, and uh, I sell hardware kits if they wanted to purchase the non-printed parts from me. But everything's on Thingiverse. All right, very nice. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Yeah, no problem. Cool. So we're here with uh, Diego from what is now Maker Muscle. Um, some of you out there might know you from Dees Maker. Yes. Um, so that used to be a 3D printer company. Now you're making linear actuators, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah, I started with the Buco Bambuquito 3D printers, and uh, now I transitioned to the Maker Muscle Actuator. It's a very customizable actuator for makers. So it's basically a, a more accessible and less effort to use version of like pneumatic uh, actuators and stuff, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I just use a regular stepper motors like the 3D printers have already. And uh, I actually got those Trinamic drivers uh, on nice. mine because I saw your video about them and I'm like I got to use these for these because they're a lot quieter But the point is that they're customizable So the problem I had is I was looking for an actuator for a 3d scanner and then uh, I couldn't find the right actuator So I'm like why isn't there a customizable one? We could I can make the right size or the right screw pitch and everything so uh, So you've got this came from. you've got that set up right there That's a connect ish device up there, right? And then you're just moving it around you basically Swiping it up and down, I guess. Yeah, so it goes up and down, uh, but this telescope's up to about six, seven feet. Oh, wow. So for those really tall people, because you got to scan the top of their heads. So it has to kind of look down a little bit. You got that, you got a demo set up, how much it can lift, and you. It's a little demo of the, the power that, uh, you know, for lifting things, and uh, it's about 10 pounds on, the, on our regular kit, our starter kit. It's pretty good, it's pretty good. You've got some different motor options over here, and you've also got these things you've been walking around with these I, I think they're, they're they're super nice yeah where, where did the, the idea come from for I just want to do something with a bunch of actuators on it and this is just kind of like a robotic flower I guess so um, 
That's uh, just for show, but it's kind of fun. <laughs> Want to do something attention getting. Yeah, it definitely looks great. Yeah. All right, where can people find you? Makermuscle.com? Uh, Makermuscle.com, yeah. Or Dazemaker. So we're here in the printer bar booth, and I'm here with Chris from uh, Makesy. And yeah, Brooke actually is a big fan of your work. Uh, what, what, what did you bring here? Sure, so this is a, a 600 watt 3D printed motor. It's a haulback motor design. Uh, it was engineered by uh, our senior engineer, Christoph Lamer, who's known for some of his mechanical clock designs. Um, this is a really interesting design because it's almost exclusively 3D printed parts. Uh, even the core here that's wound is made with a ferrous material. It happens to be an iron-based material we got from Protopasta. And this one is one that Brooke at PrinterBot printed out for us and put together. Um, this is a fantastic motor. It could be used to drive a small electric vehicle, a garbage disposal, a blender. Yeah. And yeah, this, this, is, this is no joke, this is a real motor. It's a it's fully functional motor, and this will sustain 600 watts. Uh, it runs about 6,000 RPM. We also, what's interesting about this too is that it's a derivative of a, a younger generation design that was a 60 watt motor. So part of what we're about at Macy is tracking the evolution of these designs as they get improved. We've seen these now uh, in a wind turbine that makes electricity. We have a number of other interesting objects designs that are online, so we'd love people to come visit, check us out. You're basically a platform for this sort of design to be shared. Absolutely. So our, our strength is in providing a place for individual designers and teams to collaborate on sophisticated print designs that consist of more than just files. So all of the supporting intellectual property, notes, uh, videos, imagery, and we have a place that you can share privately with your own teams, or you can make it available to the rest of the world, and we'll help you share safely, keep track of your work. Sounds great, thank you. Thanks for having us. All right, so we're here with the O-Drive, and you guys make a, well, driver system. For what exactly and why? Yeah, so it's a brushless motor controller. Uh, it, it controls the same kind of motors, brushless motors, that you use on electric skateboards and drones and that kind of stuff. But we use encoder feedback to drive it about 50 times more precise than a stepper motor. Oh, wow. 50 more than a stepper motor, you're saying? Yeah, wow. so, so a stepper motor would have like, 100 to 200 steps per evolution, uh, full stepping. Uh, and we do, uh, well, it depends on the encoder, but the encoder we like uh, has 8,000 counts per evolution. Yeah, so you're getting all the torque and all the efficiency out of a brushless DC motor, but you're still getting the positional accuracy. So your board handles both the stepper driving, or stepper driving, well, brushless driving, uh, and the PID loop control, right? That's right. So we, we do the high current switching. We have a bunch, like half the board is just power MOSFETs. Uh, so we, we do all the high current control. Uh, but then, yeah, we have the, the velocity tracking, the position tracking, all that PID loop is doing closed loop control and you know staying on target. Uh, so how much is one of those boards? It has two channels on it, right? How much is a, is a motion system built around that? Right, so our, our, we have two boards. One is 24 volts, one is 48 volts, so one is twice the power than the other one. Uh, the, the baseline one is $119 for, that drives two motors. So, so just under $70 per motor for the driver. Yeah, and of course your hardware is all open source and the software is as well. So like if someone wanted to, you know, you could fudge it together with TNC and some uh, ESCs. Um, is that gonna work as well? Right, yeah, uh, I can show you later uh, how you would do that. We have a hack DSC, I can show you where you can plug it in. Um, yeah, the hardest part, by far the hardest part, has been uh, getting the hardware right. So, so I think it might work, but you, you might get you know, some current, some inductance, something wrong, and, and that might not be as easy as you think. That shouldn't stop you from trying. Go ahead, uh, we have a community where a bunch of people who are building their own motor controllers uh, are hanging out, so come join our, our community if you have questions about motor control. What, what are you using the controls for? Is it just, you know, you, you showing off like a motorized uh, shopping cart today, are they using it for, for that sort of thing, or is it more of the pick and place, positioning, high speed kind of thing? Oh, it's, it's so diverse. We have so many different applications from users in our community. Uh, me personally, I have this, this pick and place demo, and yeah, like you said, the shopping cart. Uh, I'm building a robot arm uh, as well. Uh, there are people who uh, want to use it for um, uh, 3D printing, although it might be a bit fast for 3D printing, it, it depends. There are some people who want to make these uh, string-driven, extremely high-speed robots, pen plotters. 
it, it's just everything robotics where you need speed. And you also mentioned you're going to have these as a compact package, like a NEMA 23, NEMA 17 maybe at some point, that you just feed power in step direction and it's going to work like a step and motor, but better? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have uh, a, our next uh, product is going to be uh, a little board that sits on the back of a brushless motor. It has the encoder all built in. Uh, you basically just feed it power and some form of control. My personal favorite is CAN bus. Uh, you, you can network the motors all around and get feedback from everything. But there'll be step direction input as well. Straight up plug and play solutions. Awesome. Well, uh, good talking to you. It looks like you got a good product going. Yeah, thank and, you. Uh, yeah, and thanks for making it open source. I mean, that's that's yeah, always yeah, appreciated. Yeah. I mean, uh, my hope is that there, there's people who want to build like really heavy, like battle bots kind of motor controller have talked to me and said, you know, we l really like the logic that you have, but we want more current. And I tell them, you know what? Just take the design, add some really beefy FETs, and it should should work. We've written the software all modular, so you should be able to replace the, the low-level support package, and then the rest should just work. Are you powering the mech outside? Uh, maybe one day. <laughs> <laughs> so, Antonio, you designed all these theme park rides for 3D printing. Are you just enjoying it? Just because. I mean, it, I, I've grown up with theme parks all my life, but like uh, this ride over here, um, this is a, a Who's Break Dance. Uh, it's kind of your typical spinning ride you'd see at like a fair or a theme park. And yeah. so I, I've grown up with these rides all the time, and I just I have an, a thing for theory printing, obviously, like most people do. And yeah. I just combine everything. So just, just put one and one together. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot going on. It's like if you think about it, like theme park rides, they don't really have a purpose other than just to spin people sure. around and just make them go everywhere. Yeah. They're just for fun too, right? They're just for fun. And but there's a lot of educational stuff that can be learned from stuff like that, like electronics yeah. and wiring, pneumatics and stuff like that. So like, this is like a, a restraint model. And so like, these are what are called poles. And when you're on a ride and you have the over the shoulder restraint, yeah. uh, that this is kind of a little typical clicking sound that you hear. Right. And that is basically the mechanism that keeps uh, you locked in to the ride. Nice. So, so you've, you've got a cyclone here, you've got a drop tower, you've got a water slide. And uh, the, uh, the disco, which is kind of like the, the um, flying UFO kind of ride that you would right. see at a bunch of other uh, parks. They're, they're extremely popular. And you designed all these yourself. Um, how long did it take you to, to design each one? Um, each of them, they, they vary a lot. Uh, this was probably the fastest turnover, and this probably took like from conception to completion was like maybe a month, month and a half to maybe two right. months at most. Um, but it, it, printing is obviously what takes the longest. So a lot of a lot is everything kind of repeatable. Uh, some of them I did contact the manufacturer about like dimensions and stuff like that. And some were more responsive than others. And some of them I just had to wing it and just kind of hope that it's proportional. Yeah. Use photos. Yeah, photos, reference photos. Some of them do have dimensions online. Uh, this is a dimensionally accurate scale model of a Zamperla Giant Discovery. It's kind of the large pendulum rides that, you know, it's been, you know, they swing extremely high up in the air. so. Yeah, so that's that one. Everything here is just, just, just cause. Everything here the you see is 3D printed, and everything is free to download on Thingiverse and probably soon my, my mini factory. Uh, I don't charge anything because I don't see the point of paywalls and things like that. Yeah. Um, so people should just search for Tiny Rides. Yep, Tiny Rides on Instagram. Tiny or at Tiny Rides 3D on Instagram because someone already had Tiny Rides. Um, and uh, on on Thingiverse at Tiny Rides, not without without the 3D. Um, and also on YouTube for Coaster Labs, which is kind of the mishmasso. Like Coaster Labs is my YouTube channel for theme parks, but Tiny Rides is just the models of theme right. parks. Yeah. Right. Well, awesome project. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if I missed anything, let me know. If you were here, let me know in the comments below what your favorite project was at Bay Air Maker Fair 2018. But as always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.